hello and welcome to the show. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different sort of video. The folks over at BenQ sent me a new PC monitor to have a try out and do a bit of a review on. So the monitor that I've got here, this is the EX3203R. It might sound like a special edition Lotus. I'm sure there are 3,200 of those, but it is not. It is very much a monitor. This is a 31 and a half inch monitor. It is actually the largest one I've ever had for my computer. Uh, truth be told, I don't have, as you can see, a massive amount of, uh, of desk space. This does actually fit better than I thought it was going to, but uh, yeah, it's a pretty, a, pretty, a pretty decent size in terms of a, in terms of a monitor. You might have noticed this is also a curved monitor. Now, I know not everyone is a big fan of those. Some don't see the necessity. Some just straight up don't like them. That's fair enough. I personally have always quite, quite liked curved monitors. This is on the quite extreme end of that spectrum. It is perhaps the most curved monitor slash TV that I ever seen slash used. It's got a rating 1800R curvature. I don't. I guess that's how they met. Either way, it's very, very noticeable that this is a curved monitor. The Samsung that I've used for many years now, I've used mostly for my for, for Xbox and as a second monitor for my PC. That is also a curved TV, but that's only slightly. This is yeah, pretty noticeable. When you're looking at it dead on, of course, it is. It is effective. I've I've always felt it is effective at being that little bit more immersive, kind of tricking the eye into thinking that it's a bit larger and a bit yeah, a bit more immersive than it's uh, than a, that it's sort of flat screen counterpart. And yeah, it is it is very noticeably curved. You look at it from an angle, and <laughs> you can very clearly clearly see. So if yeah, if you like having curved monitors, this sort of thing is going to be great. If not so much, I don't know whether it will convince you or not. It is kind of on quite the extreme end of the spectrum. As I said, for me personally, I very, very much like it. It is, resolution-wise, only a 2K monitor. 2560 by uh, one, uh, 1440. So, it's not quite as... I have had... I have got 4K monitors. I used to be using an, an LG monitor, uh, the ones that I have on the SIM rig now. I used to have that as my, as my main editing monitor. Uh, the... I mean, being 2K, sure, it would be nice to have to have that greater resolution. However, when you have it in 2K, this monitor here will support all the uh, high di high dynamic range stuff. When you have it in this 2K and as as the high dynamic range, it's still a very very impressive picture quality going on here. I have to say, everyone who has come into the office and seen it running, seen it in action, especially if it's on something like Rocket League, while there are many great looking games, the sheer amount of colours that go on with uh, with some of the Rocket League stuff. That'll be my go-to game almost if I want to show off this monitor. You load up Rocket League with all of the bright colours and so on. Looks fantastic. So, while well, yeah, it is a bit of a shame not to have it uh, quite as, as 4K. It is still mighty, mighty impressive, impressive looking. It is also a 144 uh, hertz monitor, and it's the first time I've actually had one of these. Now, what that means is hertz is the refresh rate of the monitor. A lot of TVs, etc., will be at 60 hertz, which means it will refresh 60 times a uh, second, uh, so it can show 60 frames a second. Any more frames a second than that that your game might be running are wasted because your TV, your monitor is simply unable to show them. This having a refresh rate of 144 means it can show up to 144 frames a second, which means that you can make the most. You know, games can can run at higher. You know, on, on PC if you've got a powerful PC such as mine, games are more than capable of running at higher frame rates. And now I can actually use them. Now I can actually make the most of those those extra frames frames a second. It means that racing games and you know, especially on, on sort of racing games, everything will run that little bit smoother. It's a nice option to have. I mean, I've been okay running, <laughs> like, I've, I've been okay running on the, the 60 hertz monitors. However, it is a nice ability to have, being able to make the most of those, of the extra computer power, and everything runs that, uh, that little bit smoother. So, plus points? Oh, uh, it looks damn good. Uh, it is... I think quite is it's an impressively curved monitor, and it does certainly work for being that that little bit more immersive. Another big plus point, and this is more of a quality of life thing, and it might initially seem like a small thing to you. I didn't really think much about this either initially, but it's actually very quickly become my favourite feature of the monitor. It has got a light sensor on the bottom. You can see it sat underneath the, the BenQ logo. It's a little light sensor, 
and if you set the monitor to, you can leave it to set whatever brightness you want, but if you if you set the monitor to, it can adjust the brightness and color temperature of the screen depending upon the ambient lighting of the room. And within about two days, I decided I want that feature on every single TV that I have in the house. It's brilliant. It really, really is very, very good indeed. I've never had a problem, particularly before, with any of my monitors that I've set up. I tend to sort of set up, forget about them, and, and not worry. Within about two days, I very quickly noticed the difference. I found myself not really wanting to use my second monitor that was sat up to the side of, of my kind of main editing one uh, because of the horrendous brightness that was going on compared to what I had uh, going on in front of me. I can sort of faff around, change the settings, of course, but I have to keep changing them back and forward because my office isn't greatly lit. Okay, if I have a nice setup studio to doing proper tech reviews and, and proper tech setup, etc., that's great and all, but most real people don't have that sort of thing, and I don't have that. I have terrible brightness in the morning because the sun comes in my window, and by mid afternoon, the sun's buggered off, and then it's not particularly bright in here. I'd be constantly changing the settings of my other TVs and monitors if I wanted them to be at perfect, whereas this will do it all for me very, very quickly. It's very good at adjusting to what's going on. I've never found it being too bright or too dark. It's a, it's a small thing. That's a small thing, but it makes a huge difference, I find, anyway. To the point that, yeah, I want it on just about every single monitor that I own. On to the downsides. There are a couple of downsides to this. First of all, the buttons for, for the various menus are not that easy to get to. They are underneath the main frame of the thing, and... Well, they're not very well signposted. They are kind of dots to vaguely show it. Basically, you spend a good portion of time trying to feel around to find the buttons to press. They're not the most... It's just not the most elegant system. Yeah, you'll get through the menus. You'll get it set up how you want to. Uh, however, I have used considerably better on, on other stuff. It's only a minor annoyance because, again, it's not like you're likely to use a huge amount once you've got it set up. However, yeah, those buttons are not great. It's also rather difficult, I found, to connect stuff to. While it is, you know, a very sleek, very nice-looking monitor, in fact, it's designed to have very thin edges. So if you get kind of three of them, you can have a, a very, very impressive three-screen setup, which is all great and all. And from the back, it's a very, very good-looking monitor, a very nice, sleek monitor. However... The downside of that is it's very difficult to plug stuff in. It's very difficult to plug stuff in because you've got to get around the main pillar and then try and kind of guesswork where the HDMI sockets are. You know, if you've got to swap over HDMI cables a lot, it'll probably annoy you most of the time. Once it's set up, you know, it's set up. But it is just that bit more of a hassle than the other monitors that I have, the other monitors and TVs, etc., that I have used. Of course, yeah, the other downside is it isn't a 4K monitor, and it isn't the cheapest either. These are looking, uh, to, if you're looking to buy one of these, they're around about the £480-£500 mark, which is a fair amount of money. It is a lot of monitor for that money, certainly. It is a, de a very decent size monitor, a very, very good quality monitor, and in the, well, three, four weeks that I've had it, there are absolutely no problems whatsoever. And as I said, I really, really like a lot of the features, especially the kind of automatic light adjustment. But that is still a fair amount of money. The LGs, for example, that I'm using for the sim rig, they are 4K monitors, and while they are smaller and they aren't curved, they sit at just over, or actually just around the uh, the £400 mark. So, yeah, it is, it's certainly not a, not a cheap monitor. However, it is pretty damn good to go with it. Uh, the stand for it, this this whole thing comes pre-assembled. You don't have to bolt the stand onto it. Uh, the stand fairly fairly adjustable. Not quite got as many adjustments as some that I have used, but you can set height, you can set tilt, and so on. Um, fairly fairly easily, all, all nice and easy to do. It is a fairly heavy monitor. Uh, while yeah, it is a decent size, I had similar sized TVs that are considerably lighter to move around. Perhaps the bigger downside in terms of uh, sort of general general usage is if you want to mount it on a wall, or I was going to put this on the sim rig, uh, the VESA wall mounts that you would need, which is what the sim rig will use as well, uh, this requires a separate transfer kit to do it which I didn't have, and which you would have to get separately. Which is, again, a little bit of a downside, uh, considering all the other monitors I have would, or are, you know, capable of being straight bolted on to the sim rig. 
However, scoring more points in the BenQ's favour is, as I shall now dub it, and I think it shall be a new industry standard, the Hot Wheels test. How many Hot Wheels cars can you fit under the base of a monitor, sort of without leaving the area of the monitor? The Samsung I have, that can fit 22, while the BenQ, that scores a massive 27. So yes, you can fit many Hot Wheels cars if you're struggling, like I do in my office, to have space to put all of your Hot Wheels cars. Many of them will fit underneath the monitor, which is quite a nice thing to have. Also, as I said, the whole thing comes pre-assembled. You don't have to attach the mount or anything, and that means it comes in a massive box. And that means the cats get a new fort. Uh, so, like, this is a genuinely massive box and I have no idea where to put it uh, most of the time. But, as you can imagine, cats, especially kittens, love boxes. And being such a large box, it's multi-use. This time I tried putting it on its side to see what the, uh, what the animals would do. Amara is very curious by the handle. Uh, <laughs> Zeke tried to climb it. That didn't really work. Uh, Zeke's trying to climb it again, realising it moves around. Eve's just having a little bit of a sniff. Little, little, little bit of an event. I'm actually kind of surprised. Eve is normally one that jumps at everything. So the fact that she's only having a sniff. Amara was actually the most sort of curious by the box on its side. Although that was predominantly around attacking the handle hole. Zeke was continuing to, to climb it. You might wonder where the fourth of the cats and that now she's having a bit of a clean. Well, the big grumpy, the big grumpy Cass, uh, he is interested in boxes. He is still interested in boxes, honestly. However, at this particular moment in time, big grumpy Cass was on his windowsill seat and fast asleep. Uh, so, yeah, I put the box on its side. Amara jumped in within about two seconds. I hadn't even sort of set it up properly. And Amara was immediately in and apparently trying to dig her way out of the corner. I'm not quite sure why she was digging her way through the box. I don't know, what were you up to, little kitten? Uh, or big kitten, really. The other little kittens are uh, <laughs> jumping into this one. Like, this was literally put the box down, and it is immediately catted. As any cat owner will know, you know, you have, you have boxes. This is an easy way to keep, keep the cats entertained for many hours, to be fair. And being such a large box, you can keep many cats entertained at once. Uh, <laughs> Eve, Eve's starting to have a go at Tamara's tail, although it's probably not a good idea. Amara is considerably bigger than you. And Cass was still sat on the windowsill, not really moving. He did, unfortunately, I didn't have my phone on me at the time, or any sort of recording gear on me at the time. Uh, after I'd stopped filming everything, Cass did jump in the box. So all four cats have investigated. All four cats have given the box a, um, a cat seal of approval. Uh... Amara's dedicated that corner. That's her corner now. No one else shall have that corner. You might leave us buggered off. The kittens are easily distracted. I will say that much. The kittens are uh, much easily distracted than the other cats, which means something jingles or something rustles. They will vacate the box, although they do very quickly go and uh, climb back in. For now, it is... It is Amara who is uh, Queen of the Castle. Now, again, as any good cat owner should have, there are many boxes littering my house, and the BenQ box is big enough to have boxes in boxes, and then that's double good for cats and kittens, I think at least. Pretty sure that's how it works. Either way, the kittens seem to like it. The kittens seem to like it jumping from outside all the way into the inner box, for whatever reason. Uh, <laughs> It's just the way... It's actually quite a big leap. It is quite a big leap for a little kitten. Uh, Eve was much more interested... Once I got down here to film, Eve was much more interested in the camera. Uh, she does like to come and investigate just about everything. Zeke's far too busy uh, having, a, having a clean. Eve's going to go and try and have a little bit of a climb. Yeah, you can't quite climb like that. Is a, you can see, you can see how, how bigger a leap it is for a, for a little kitten. So it is not, a, not an easy one. She eventually uh, jumps her way out. And Zeke will be the... Uh, you've got your tongue stuck out, mate. Uh, <laughs> Mara was the, the, the main one to actually prefer the BenQ box to the little one. Mara would like to sort of use the moat, wander around the outside. Side. Uh, Eve claimed the center, and uh, if Amara tried to go in it, she got batted, and she was then happy just to kind of wander. She actually wandered around in circles for uh, for, a, <laughs> for a little while. And uh, yeah, see, Amara, Amara thinks about trying to go in, and uh, nope, nope. <laughs> Eve, Eve does not like that. Eve, Eve does not like that, and then bye bye, Amara. So <laughs> there we go. Uh, the box makes for excellent, excellent catly entertainment. They were very, very pleased with it. Uh, so, Zeke also wanted to jump back in again. So, 
yeah, on a slightly, I said on a slightly more serious note, back to the actual uh, monitor at hand, I, would I recommend one of these? Absolutely, I would. Yes, it is a touch on the pricey side compared to some alternatives. I will be honest though, uh, as soon as I started using this, I won't be going back to my previous monitor. This is going to be my main monitor for editing, for a fair bit of recording, etc. I really, really like it. Uh, the I say again, it it seems like a, a a minor thing, but honestly, the whole sort of uh, changing bright, brightness control thing is fantastic, and I I really really like having that on here. Picture quality is excellent. It is absolutely excellent, and yeah, this would be this is of all the monitors I have, this is the monitor of choice that I will be using for the for the for the editing. So. Yeah, I do. I do very much recommend it. It is, though. Yeah, on the <laughs> touch on the on the pricey side. That though is going to be it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching, and uh, thank you to BenQ for sending me this uh, this monitor. Until next time, though, a goodbye.